Welcome to Inspiring Minds, powered by the Edison Awards, showcasing the leading innovators from across the globe. I'm your host, Jennifer Trammell. Put yourself into an operating room. Look up. Would you expect to see this? I've been in surgeries where you can see a haze across the top of the room in the operating room lights because there's so much smoke that's been released into the environment. That's right, smoke created during laparoscopic surgery. It clouds the surgeon's vision as they do their work through a camera and creates repeat exposure for everyone in the room, like nurses. They have emphysema and they've never smoked a cigarette a day in their life, but they've been exposed to the smoke in the operating room that's why Northgate Technologies developed a smoke removal system for laparoscopic surgeries, the Nebulae SRS. This is a problem Northgate Vice President and General Manager David McDonough has worked on throughout his career. Dave joins us here on Inspiring Minds to explain how the Nebulae SRS solves several issues. First, removing smoke and also reducing CO2 gas usage, lessening surgical time for patients, and improving a hospital's carbon footprint. Dave, welcome to Inspiring Minds. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks. It's great to be here and see you again. Uh, we are so glad to have you. I want to start by saying congratulations to you and the team on your Edison Award. Oh, it's been great. Um, I can't even tell you um, the impact it's had on our company, the team. We're so excited to be recognized by the Edison Foundation and the Edison Awards. And it's, it's been fantastic. So glad to talk to you about it. Well-deserved. And we will dig into the Nebulae SRS today. But first, I want to learn more just about Northgate Technologies. Who sure. are you? What do you do? Yeah, I mean... It's an interesting story because people aren't that familiar with our company, but we've been around for over 30 years. Um, our company started um, back in, in the mid 80s. Uh, there were a few engineers that our founder, uh, Mitch Barron, uh, really liked what they did, saw some technology, started the company and let them just work on products to make healthcare and surgery better. Um, so that was about 30 years ago. We're located here in Elgin, Illinois, just west of Chicago. And um, over that 30 years, we've accumulated over 80 patents, and our products have been used in over half a million surgeries uh, around the world. But for many people, um, they wouldn't know the name of our company because most of that time we've been what's called an original equipment manufacturer, an OEM manufacturer of equipment. So we bring our innovative technology to market with other companies' names on it. And as we'll talk about a little bit later, that's changing. That's one of the things that's changing for our company. But um, we're just branching out. We are um, starting to bring our technology directly to hospitals. And that awareness of who we are is one of the benefits of being recognized by the Edison Foundation. So in addition to the awareness that we're creating with the Edison Award, we also received an award uh, earlier this year from the Society of Laparoscopic and Robotic Surgeons uh, for Innovation of the Year for the Nebulae SRS as well. So we're building kind of this this momentum, this critical mass, a tipping point for uh, people learning about Northgate, learning about our technology, so they'll at least consider it for helping them with their surgeries. So making that transition from OEM to now innovating and creating your own products, tell yeah. us a little bit more about that transformation. Well, you know, it's, it's a different culture for our company. And in order for us to bring innovative products to the market, we really have to understand what our customers need. And having that direct connection to both uh, what the patients need, but also what the end users need is, is critical for us to do that. And as an OEM manufacturer for all those years, um, there was kind of a barrier between us and that end user and that, and that consumer, if you will. And um, we've really done a good job over the last few years, making that connection with what healthcare providers need in the operating room, and then taking those needs, translating them to requirements for products, and that's essentially what we did in creating the Nebulae SRS. Well, let's get into the Nebulae SRS. What sure. problem does this solve? Because this is a problem we've been talking about for decades, right? Uh, yeah, and personally, I've been involved with for decades. And just to give you a little background on my journey as it relates to this product, back in the early 2000s, I think it was 2002, I was working for a company as an engineer. And one of my projects was to create an insufflation filter and uh, a filter for actually removing smoke from laparoscopic surgeries, which is what Nebulae SRS does. Um, and we'll come back to that in a moment. So I did that as an engineer. I had those projects. I created those products. 
Uh, fast forward 15 years to when I started here at Northgate and my first day I walk in, you know, I have my new office, I'm getting situated and I open a cabinet and lo and behold in that cabinet is an insufflation tubing set with the filter that I designed 15 years ago in the tubing set. And I'm like, okay, this is karma. I was meant to be here. This is great. And, and I knew one of the reasons I came to Northgate is because I knew Northgate worked in this area of laparoscopic surgery. It's a place that I had a lot of passion for. And uh, so we, we um, embarked on, you know, how do we, um, you know, solve this problem better? And the problem we're trying to solve is, or that we have solved, I would say, is when laparoscopic surgery is being performed, some sort of energy has to be used to cut tissue and stop bleeding. Inevitably, that energy, that technology creates a, what's called a plume or smoke that clouds the vision of the surgeon who's doing their work through a camera and looking at a screen. Um, that is not uh, conducive to good surgery. So over the years, what surgeons have done and their staff has done, they just open a valve on the port and they let that smoke out into the operating room environment so that they can see. Well, the consequences of that is that the healthcare providers, the nurses are breathing in smoke all day long. And, and I've been in surgeries where you can see a haze across the top of the room in the operating room lights because there's so much smoke that's been released into the environment. And it's, it's completely unacceptable. There's no work environment in the world that allows people to be exposed to smoke day in and day out. And, and so our product, the, the Nebulae SRS, is designed to continuously recirculate that gas in and out of the patient, scrubbing it through a filtration system so that that field of vision is continuously clear. The surgeon never has to stop and um, wait for the smoke to clear. But at the same time, all those contaminants, all that smoke is trapped inside that tubing set. So there is absolutely no exposure for the staff to that smoke. So, so that problem of, of dealing with that smoke and, and how we've solved it, that's, that's really the, the story of Nebulae SRS. I think our listeners might find that fascinating. Most of us don't think, what is it like inside of that operating room? Mm -hmm. And when you first described that haze of smoke, yeah. we would never allow that to be a working condition in any other industry. Absolutely. And so, you know, again, because of my history, I, I think back to when I was an engineer working on these products and, you know, I was researching the published literature on what are the impacts of smoke and, and what chemicals are in it and what are the consequences and so on. And, and, you know, I did all that work and fast forward to now as we're putting the Nebulae SRS together and we look for the references to put in our materials now, there are a lot of the same references that I found, you know, 15 years ago. And so, why then have we not solved this problem before? And I think a couple of reasons. Um, I think we've come to a tipping point of technology being capable of doing what's needed. But then also, I believe that the nursing community and states, uh, the state legislatures around the, company, uh, around the country have started to take action to mandate active smoke evacuation solutions used in the operating room. In fact, um, currently there are nine states that have passed laws requiring active smoke evacuation of use on every surgical procedure. And there's another nine states that are, um, have that legislation in process. So, you know, I think many people have, have known this problem has existed for a long time. Um, I think technology is coming up to what it needs to, to do an, uh, an effective job in, in solving the problem. And then I think um, people are starting to take action and, and mobilize to create the legislation and the laws to require it. And, and it's, it's a shame that it's taken so long. I mean, we've had uh, nurses come up to our booth. We, we go um, every year to a conference called AORN. It's the Association of Perioperative Registered Nurses. And so these are the nurses who work in these ORs every day. And we'll have our booth like many companies do. And we'll be talking about, you know, removing smoke from that environment. And we've had nurses come up to our booth you know, wheeling their oxygen cylinder with them because they have emphysema and they've never smoked a cigarette a day in their life, but they've been exposed to the smoke in the operating room and they, there's consequences to that. And so they're very happy to see that there are companies like ours, you know, trying to solve that problem. Consequences, consequences, not just for the nurses and the staff, but this also has real implications for patients, right? Absolutely. You know, and I think you know, um, one of the things that's unique about the Nebulae SRS is that we're the only system 
that's a closed loop that recirculates the gas. All right. And for, for people who aren't involved in laparoscopic surgeries, I, I'll try to illustrate why that's important. Um, if you're removing smoke from a, uh, and gas from a patient's abdomen, okay, and you're just sucking it out, right, through some sort of negative pressure, well, that gas has to get back into that patient to maintain that environment. Well, that's coming from either a large cylinder that's in some other room of the hospital or a cylinder sitting there right next to the, you know, the bed and the insufflator. And that gas comes in, it's dry, it's cold, um, it's chilling the patient's body, it's drying out tissues, um, and that's not good for the patient, okay? Now, when you take that gas out and you recirculate it, scrub it clean and put it back in, it's the same gas the patient had in them. It's, it's a warmer temperature. It takes the humidity or the moisture from that gas. It puts it back in. It's a more um, holistic and, and a better way to, to do that. In addition to being better for the patient and better to the, for the staff, it's also better for our environment, all right? And when you think about one of the gases that we're trying to eliminate or minimize um, for our environment and to prevent global warming, it's CO2. Well, CO2 is the gas that's used in laparoscopic surgery. So if you're, if you're removing literally hundreds of liters of gas throughout a, an hour long procedure, with our product, you're recirculating the same three liters of gas. You're not using a single liter more of CO2 using our product as compared to other ways of removing gas, which could be using hundreds of liters. So I, th I think, you know, of course, I'm going to be the biggest fan of the product. It's our company. We, we developed it, but I truly believe it has benefits in so many ways for the hospitals, the patients, and our environment. It's almost like you're maintaining that homeostasis by taking the gas that was in a person, cleaning it, putting it right back in. You're maintaining that internal environment for the patient, keeping a cleaner environment for nurses, making sure the actual surgeons can see what they're doing without smoke. Yeah. Sounds like win, win, win right there. It is. And it's so funny the way you just said that it matches the language we use in our vision statement. And part of that is to create an optimal environment for people to do surgery. And that's exactly what this is. And um, in addition to all the things we just talked about, um, you know, just again, to help your listeners who don't maybe uh, work in this area a lot, um, when you're doing surgery in a laparoscopic setting, and you have this uh, abdomen inflated with CO2, a lot of things can happen that'll cause gas to leave, and then the insufflator has to replace the gas, and, and the, the abdomen kind of goes in and out. There's like a, we, we call it a breathing effect from gas leaving and being put back in. The way it works, it causes this instability in that environment, right? Well, when you're recirculating the same three or four liters of gas throughout that system, and no gas is leaving, that insufflator doesn't have to add any gas you don't get that unstable breathing environment. So in addition to all those other things, that surgeon's looking through, looking at their screen with the camera in an environment that has no smoke in it and is just stable. Everything they're doing isn't moving it, and they can just concentrate on doing the best possible surgery and getting that patient out of the OR as quickly as possible. Ultimately, that's the best thing. Yeah, so less time under anesthesia for the patient too all of that, right? And, and just really getting better outcomes, um, allowing them to do the great surgeries that they do every day. Awesome. Now we know innovation doesn't always go according to plan, right? That's Tell us true. a little bit about this process of creating Nebulae SRS. What went wrong along the way? <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I could tell you that it was smooth sailing and we're brilliant at what we do, but um, everyone listening would know that's not true because you know, creating something new to the world it's not easy. Um, if it were, everyone would be doing it, right? And so what I learned through the process was you really have to make some hard choices sometimes, right? And as you go through the process, there's a lot of incentives and motivations to maybe go fast or maybe save money or do those things. But unless you keep an absolutely rock solid focus on what is the best thing for the patient what is the best thing for the end user of the product? If you don't use that as your true north to guide your decisions, you may bring out a new product, but it won't be innovative and nobody's going to want to use it. And so for us, as we went through this development, um, there were some tough moments where we had to make some really hard choices that we had to go back to the drawing board. We had to say, nope, stop. This is not good enough. Go back. We've got to fix this problem before we go one step further, right? And so that is, um, that is something very important. I'd seen it before, but hadn't been right in the middle of it like we were with SRS and had to make those decisions. 
um, like like I did. And and a couple of things happened. First of all, the product came out to be what it needs to be. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to achieve. But an unintended consequence was how the team of people working on that product, how they work together and the the engagement and the bonds that we had, like we, we solved the problem. Hey, it was tough. We had to do, we had to work hard. We solved this problem. And that was a very unifying and bonding experience for our team. And, um, you know, again, coming back to the Edison Award, for some of those engineers to be with us at the ceremony, to, to see the product recognized, knowing all that hard work they had to do and the challenges we overcome had overcome, it was just, it was great, right? But, but that's my lesson, right? Is be true to what is needed for that product in the market for the people using it and never give, you know, never let, let go of that. And, and if you got to make tough choices, you got to make them. Tell us a little bit more about having your team at the Edison Awards. What was it like being in Fort Myers that week? Uh, well, first of all, um, to, <laughs> you know, we all work very hard. We're in the same building. We had people from different locations come. So to, to get everyone together, first of all, was great. Um, but second, to be around that environment, which had so many different technologies and people uh, from industries that we never have connection with, right? So being in medical device, in medical devices, we we go to our conferences, we see many of the same people and companies every time. But there at the Edison Awards, oh my gosh, we we saw things related to protein for space travel and electric planes and like I can't even the list goes on and on everything you can imagine and that was really invigorating it was really inspiring um it was it was an honor to be amongst all those really smart innovative people and um I think uh, especially our engineers derived a lot of energy and inspiration from that it really is a unique environment having all of those brilliant minds together working on different problems to advance our world and you start to draw these connections absolutely that you wouldn't have necessarily put together with biomed and mm -hmm. it comes together in a really interesting way so shameless plug mark yes. for spring 2024 we want to see everybody there well you're going to see us again jennifer that's for sure all right well let's talk about that what is going to be the next technology that Northgate brings out for your next Edison Award. Where are we going in the future? Well, okay, so we are staying in laparoscopic surgery, minimally invasive surgery, and we have a brand new product we're bringing to market right now. It's called StimSight. And, and this is amazing. The founder uh, who created the company, we acquired the technology recently, um, a former uh, general surgeon, um, you know, doing surgery, identified a problem. And that problem was, um, in, in the lower abdomen, there's, there's a part of our body that connects the kidney to the bladder, and it's called the ureter. And as laparoscopic surgery is being done, finding where that particular anatomy is so that you don't harm it unintentionally is critically important, okay? And so one day the surgeon was doing his work, and he's like, man, I really, I'm kind of guessing as to where this is. There's got to be a better way. And what he realized is that the ureter, like say your esophagus, your body sends an electrical signal that stimulates that muscle to, to go through what's called a peristaltic action, like swallow or move something along the way. And so he discovered the electrical signal that mimics the body signal so that through an instrument that the surgeon already has in their hand, he can send that signal into the body, watch the ureter contract and verify for 100% certainty that is the ureter. And um, it, it's an amazing technology. Um, we're bringing it to, to hospitals now. And I think it absolutely warrants consideration, of course, for an award next year. And we will be applying and we hope to see you again uh, at, at, the at the ceremony, at the celebration. Oh, uh, well, we'll be keeping an eye out for that for sure. You know, at the heart of all of this innovation is really people. And I was mm -hmm. hoping you'd share more about Northgate's culture and the people who make this possible. Yeah. I, um, I've learned so much over the last few years about the, the, the power of people and the team and, and, and how do you get a group of people together who work well together? And, um, you know, I remember when I first started managing groups of people, um, I'd get advice from others who'd been doing it a long time and they'd say, it's all about the people. And I would listen to them and I'd say, okay, um, sure, I, I get that. But I'd go about my business and I didn't really know what that meant, you know, but then through trials and tribulations and mistakes and I've learned, I, I, I feel like we as a company now have a much better sense of that. And, and what we really focus on here at Northgate is identifying the characteristics of people 
who work well together on a team. Because ultimately, if, if you work together with other people well on a team, you can overcome any challenge, right? And, and the way we think about it is there's really three characteristics. There's people who are humble, hungry, and smart. And, and if you are humble, you'll put the team's interest before your own. If you're hungry and willing to do the extra work to help the team out and achieve the team goal. And if you're smart, meaning you pay attention to how your actions affect others and how they feel about things and, and take that like kind of the emotional IQ aspect of it. If, if everyone at the company has those three characteristics, things just go better and you can do more and, and better things. And I feel like we're making great progress in that area. And I think that was one of the secret ingredients that helped us get over a lot of the challenges we had with Nebulae SRS. Humble, hungry, hungry smart. Smart, yep, yep. Right. And I should give credit. Um, we, didn't, we didn't develop that ourselves. It's from a, a book called The Ideal Team Player uh, written by Patrick Lencioni. Um, and I recommend it to anyone listening to this podcast. It, it is really a, a good story. It's a very simple framework to use, and it has been so effective for us. Um, so for anyone who's interested, I would recommend checking that out. Well, it really has been. I see the Edison Award behind you on your desk there. Huge congratulations to you and the team, Dave. You should be very proud of what you've accomplished and the difference that it's making for patients, for nurses, for doctors inside the OR. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, and that is truly what keeps us going every day is, is making that difference for, for everyone involved in, in providing great care for patients. So thank you very much for this opportunity. We really appreciate it. Great to have you. Thanks. You've been listening to Inspiring Minds, powered by the Edison Awards, where we showcase leading innovators from across the globe. I'm Jennifer Trammell. Thank you for tuning in. And we look forward to having you join us for our next conversation with another inspiring innovator.